once upon a time, there was a sensible straight line who was hopelessly in love with a dot. You were the beginning and the end, the hub, the core, the quintessence, he told her, but the dot wasn't a bit interested, for she was in love with a wild and unkempt squiggle who never seemed to have much on his mind at all. They went everywhere together, dancing and singing and frolicking and laughing and laughing and doing Lord knows what else. He's so wild and free and full of joy, the dot informed the line. And you are as stiff as a stick, dull, conventional, repressed, tired and trammeled, subdued, smothered, stifled, squashed, squelched, and quenched. Come back when you straighten yourself out, kid, said the squiggle as he chased her into the tall grass. In the immortal words of Jay Giles, love sticks, but geometry is forever. The Dot and the Line, a romance in lower mathematics by Norton Jester. Why take chances, said the line to himself without much conviction. I'm dependable. I know where I'm going. I've got direction. I've got dignity. But this was small consolation for the miserable line. Every day he grew more and more morose. He stopped eating or sleeping until eventually he was completely on edge. His friends noticed how terribly thin and drawn he was becoming and decided to cheer him up. She's not good enough for you. She lacks depth, but he hardly heard a word they said. Anyway, he looked at her, she was perfect. 36 units on top, 36 units on the side, 36 units up front. He saw things in her that no one else could even imagine. She's more beautiful than any straight line I've ever seen. His friends just sighed. Even allowing for his feelings, they felt like this was stretching a point. All day and all night, the line dreamt of the inconstant dot and of himself as the forceful figure she was sure to admire. <clears throat> the line as a celebrated daredevil. The line as an international sportsman. The line as force in the world of art. But he soon grew tired of self-deception and decided that Perhaps the squiggle had the right idea all along. I like spontaneity. I need to learn to be free, to express the inner passionate me. But no matter how hard or how long he tried, he always ended up the same way. But he kept trying and failing and trying again until eventually he learned that with enough concentration and self-control, he could change direction and bend in whatever way he chose. And so he did, and he formed an angle. And then another, and then another, and then another, and then another, and then another. Hot stop, he cried, and stayed up half the night, putting on an outrageous display of sides, bends, and angles. Freedom is not a license for chaos, he observed the next morning. Oh my head. He decided right then and there that he was not going to squander his talents on cheap exhibitionism. For months he practiced in secret, forming squares and triangles, rhomboids, parallelograms, decagons, dodecahedrons, parallelopipeds, and an infinite number of other shapes so complex that he had to number his sides and angles just to keep track. Over time, he learned to control complex curves and ellipses and even circles. You name it, I'll play it, he cried. But all of his successes meant nothing to him alone. And so he went back in search of the dot. This guy doesn't stand a chance, said the squiggle in a voice that sounded like bad plumbing, but 
The line was bursting with old love and new confidence and was not to be denied. Throughout the evening, he was by turns clever, profound, eloquent, mysterious, dazzling, compelling. The dot was overwhelmed. She giggled like a schoolgirl and didn't know what to do with her hands. And then she turned to the squiggle who had suddenly developed a severe cramp. Well, she asked, wanting to give him every chance. The squiggle, taken by surprise, did the best he could. Is that all? she demanded. Well, I guess so, he said. I mean, I uh, suppose so. I mean, well, I guess what I'm saying is, I never really know how it's going to turn out. Hey, have you heard the one about the two guys who... The dot was surprised that she had never noticed how hairy and coarse he was and how untidy and graceless and how he always picked his ear. And she realized that what she had thought was freedom and joy was actually just anarchy. And with that... She turned to the line and took him by the arm. Do the one with all the funny curves again, honey. And he did. And soon, they did. And they lived, if not happily ever after, at least reasonably so. Moral, to the vector belong the spoils.